let us talk about distributed computing as the name suggests computing in a distributed manner so let us see uh, how this works distributed computing and we'll see distributed computing management server the comparison with other this uh, computing then other trends also then application and types of this uh, computing security and standard advantages and disadvantages so the number of real applications are still somewhat limited and the challenges particularly standardization are still significant but there is a new energy in the market as well as some actual paying customers so it's about time to take a look at where distributed processing fits and how it works why i uh, mention this that now we don't want that our process or our work to hinder means it should not take so much time so we have people who are able to pay and willing to pay for that we now need some computing that is pretty fast right so a distributed computing architecture it consists of a very lightweight software agents that are installed on a number of client systems let me reiterate it that on number of client system there are software which are installed and no and one or more dedicated distributed computing management server right so there may be there may also be requesting clients with software that allows them to submit jobs along with the list of their required resources now a system has certain resources which is with them now it would require it may require certain more resources so it may go to the this distributed way okay so how this work that this is a user it submits a job right we have entropia client machines mean various client machines these are network manager which has a graphical user interface this has a graphical user interface this is a administrator it manages these resources this is being sent this is being sent the data has been sent or the job has been sent now this is been computed in various client machines there are various client machines which has been administered by some administrator and he gets it back with less time with a limited time so what is this uh, management server doing this server has a has a pretty big role so they take this uh, distributing computer request and now they divide their this uh, large processing task into smaller tasks now they th which can run on individual desktop system okay sometimes this may be done by the requesting system also so that they send application packages and some client management software to the idle client machine and then request them to please perform the task which has been submitted by the user and they also monitor the status of the job being run by the clients this is the distributed versus other trends because we have separate computers also we have clusters also so the cost is this is as low as 1% of the cost of supercomputers and much less expensive than the clusters this is unlimited the scalability is unlimited you can have two system 20 system 2000 system 2 lakh systems and the hard hardware system requirement is minimum you know we are talking about pcs and the administrative support is one it staff member can manage tens of thousand of member machines from a single client server so in a cent central server management soft server so we just needs few people while it supercomputer and cluster it is it in intensive now the nodes member computers are actually not dedicated full uh, member computer utility is maintained like we have various uh, systems so some request come it can be distributed to some some system or the other system the other request can be um, distributed to the same system or the other system and the risk of failure is quite low the maintenance is very low because the number of machine if they go off the other machine will take over and the obsolescence this is low because self upgrading software is there and the network value automatically increases as pcs are added or upgraded right so these are the uh, you can say advantages or uh, 
various good features of distributed computing network. Now, let us come to the application characteristic of this distributed computing. Uh, actually, not all applications are suited for this distributed compu computing, right? The closer an application gets to running in real time, the less appropriate it is, right? If it is not real, if you can just send your data and or, you know, application or your uh, thing which you want and you want to forget it for some time, then it is okay. But if you want it real time, maybe not. Even processing tasks, it normally take one hour or, you know, too many not drive much benefit. If the communication among distributed systems and the constantly changing availability of process system becomes a bottleneck, because there may be some systems which may be not be available, and for that the waiting time may be more. So, instead you should think in terms of tasks that take hours, weeks, month. For that, distributed computing is a good solution. These are the types of distributed computing applications. Like, for example, we have derivat uh, this derivative pricing, risk management, trading research, asset liability management, data mining, or say, we have energy trading, seismic processing, computational chemistry, or is our modeling. This can be used, and we have uh, a client application, we have a live cluster driver. It gives to these various engines and returns or feedbacks or get the final solution. There are security and standard standard challenges also. The major challenge is of increasing scale. Okay. As soon as you move outside your corporate, the firewall security and standardization challenge becomes quite significant because they are not in your, um, they may not be uh, in your purview. It may be somewhere else. So most uh, vendors today, they currently specialize in application that stop at the corporate firewall you know in you know to make uh, out the global grid territory so this may be a bottleneck and beyond spanning firewall with a single platform lies the challenge of spanning multiple firewalls walls and platform which means standards you go to other network or you go to other system there may be some bottlenecks also but there are advantages economic advantage the computer harnessed together give a better performance ratio the mainframes there are various systems they, they are PCs they will give you good economics and the speed the distributed system may have more total computing power than a mainframe that computing power I'm talking about the speed the time may not may be less uh, of getting the feedback and the inherent distribution of application some applications are inherently distributed like ATM banking application and reliability if one machine crashes, the system as a whole will uh, will not, uh, you know, uh, go down. It will still survive because there are various machines, uh, various storage devices. But the disadvantage is the complexity. If you have various systems, there may be, uh, you know, if people are not experienced, then the lack of experience in designing may come or uh, you know distributed system is is actually very complex to uh, implement because of various platform various language etc then the network problem if the network underlying a uh, distributed system saturates go down or get blocked then the distributed uh, system will be effectively disabled through negating most of the advantages of the distributed system we are talking about and then the security Security is actually a major hazard. Since easy access to data means easy access to secret data which you have. So the advantages of this type of architecture for the right kinds of applications are impressive. If you have good applica the applications which I mentioned, you can use distributed computing. And the most obvious is the ability to provide access to supercomputer level processing power, which is uh, quite uh, considerable or better for a fraction of cost of typical supercomputer. Thank you so much. Take care.